This is the 2023 Ford F-150 Raptor R. Is this the biggest and baddest full-size truck you can buy? We're going to find out right now on Driving Sports TV. This is the 2023 Ford Raptor R. It is the most extreme version of the F-150 Ford has ever made. This competes directly with the Ram TRX, which actually won up Ford when it came out last year. With the Raptor R, Ford is fighting back in a very big way. And as consumers, we're all the winners. <laughs> oh yeah, that is the Predator V8 with a supercharger. Oh. Under the hood of the Raptor R is a 5.2 liter supercharged V8 engine producing 700 horsepower and 640 pound-feet of torque, which is pretty much on par in terms of power with the TRX. It's connected to a 10-speed automatic transmission with a full-time four-wheel drive system. Tires here are epic 37-inch BFG KO2s wrapped around 17 by 8.5-inch alloy wheels. These big rollers help achieve a massive 13.1 inches of ground clearance. Under the body is a full-size matching spare. In the back, you get five-link rear suspension and Fox live valve shocks on all corners. This is similar to the setup found in the standard Raptor. Of course, the Raptor R isn't focused on saving fuel. EPA rates economy of this beast at 10 miles to the gallon in town and 15 on the highway. Price as it sits here with optional moonroof and spray and bed liner, you're looking at $111,935 US dollars, including destination. Of course, this Raptor R isn't focused on saving fuel. Uh, as such, the EPA rates this at 10 miles to the gallon around town and 15 on the highway. This thing just looks massive in person. I mean, look at this hood. Uh, in case you had any doubt, it is a Ford, of course. Underneath here, we have actual metal skid plates and we get big recovery hooks as well. The headlight units are very impressive. You have multi modules and then you also get the rigid fog lights underneath. Nice step there. In the back, we get a short bed that does have a spray and bed liner. With this, you can carry a payload of up to 1,400 pounds. Uh, in terms of towing, you can also tow up to 8,700 pounds. I really like what Ford has been doing with their trucks here. In the back, they have made them so incredibly useful. Here, we of course have your fold down gate that includes measuring lines, which is handy when you need them. Uh, you can also put clamps in uh, so you can actually work from the bed here. Further, we have this pop-out step, which makes getting into the bed really easy. As useful as this is, I still like that Chevy puts in steps with their bumper. Uh, you don't have that here, but you do get a bottle opener. Uh, now in the back here, we of course have several tie downs. We have bed lighting and we also get a power socket. Big flared fenders. Now let's check what it's like inside. Ooh, this looks nice. In the second row here, we not only have room enough for the crew to sit, we also get extra storage. Pull that up. Pull that up and a deployable bin, which is great for organizing. If you want more space, just fold it down and you have a very flat floor. Back here, lots of room for even like human-sized adults. I'm six foot one, legs torso proportionate. I got tons of space to spread out here. Um, I even get two stages of seat warmers on the outboard seats, plus uh, USB and AC power. Oh, I even get a 12 volt. That's nice. Right. Here, fold down armrest with cup holders. And I love this sunroof. This is really cool. Now, the Raptor R does not come with this big sunroof. It is an option, but I think a good one. Okay, let's climb on up. Oh, that's tall. 
right, power. Oh, <laughs> man, that's supercharged V8. It makes like a whistle sound as it revs up. That is very cool. We've, of course, reviewed several of the modern F-150s, and this interior, it's just a sportier version of the same thing. We get the digital display for the gauge cluster. We have this really nice uh, infotainment system here that's quite large, but not overly large. The benefit, of course, of a large infotainment system is also you get a very large rear view display. Uh, for when you're switching in the back, we have a surround view on the right and a standard view on the left. But further, if I go into drive and I go up here and hit camera, I get a top down showing forward. But it also, if I switch into an off road mode, so now we're in four high, now it turns into a trail cam, which is amazing because it shows me tracking lines in the front, which really helps me align over challenging obstacles. And then, of course, we also have buttons down here for aircon and for stereo controls, which I just love having actual physical buttons. It's just great. Uh, we have dual climate control. We have seat coolers, seat heaters, and a steering wheel heater as well. Uh, and the seats are very comfortable. They're made by Recaro, and they are very adjustable. I really like them. Uh, they feel great. The steering wheel wrapped in leather with accent stitching and a center marker great these paddle shifters big chunky metallic they move with the wheel really like those uh, and just just overall this whole interior effect is just straight up what you expect from a raptor i really like this inside now of course they do have some stuff that provides functionality for people who are buying this not just as a fun truck but also as a work truck you can hit a button there it'll Put the transmission selector down, pull this, and now you have a flat workspace or a place to have lunch. Fold it back, and you're back in business. I love how we have lots of slots here to put our stuff. We've got a cup holder um, up here. We have a wireless charger because this system, of course, supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both cabled and wireless. Uh, and as far as cables, we have both USB-C and USB-A plugs down there. Right. Well, this is really nice. Now let's talk about some of the Raptor specific features here. Uh, this does come with the four automatic four wheel drive system. I also have a rear locker I can push down here. And then if I want to change drive modes, it's the dial on the outside. And we have so many drive modes. We have sport, tow haul, slippery, Baja, rock crawl, off road, uh, so we're going to play with these modes a little bit later. I just want to kind of introduce where I'm switching them from, which is right down there. If we move up here, we have yet another row of buttons. Uh, this controls everything from the cameras to the auto park system to turning off traction control, and then also the trail one pedal drive system, uh, which is the trail control. That's a button up there. Now this does have the B&O sound system, which sounds pretty good. And we have a massive hump on the hood, uh, which I'll be watching the whole time because that's just telling me all the time, dude, you have a supercharged V8 under there. And when you look at that hood, you know it. <laughs> we also get a trailer brake as well as a dial to control the pro trailer system. Uh, but we're not trailering today. Nope, we are going to test this in its native environment. Uh, mostly off-road. We're going to go to our off-road course in Eastern Washington and see exactly how good this thing is. Now, I do want to note weather. I can't pick the weather. We have these vehicles scheduled weeks in advance, and I think what we're going to see in Eastern Washington is a very slushy, muddy situation. But I think a vehicle like the Raptor should have no problem with it. In fact, if we get some time, maybe we'll even cut some new roads. Okay, so I think enough looking at the inside. Time to take this for a drive. So now I've gone over the pass. I'm in Eastern Washington, which is the higher and drier part of the state. And uh, we're gonna be doing some off-roading. But first, I need to do some tests with this Raptor R. 
One thing to keep in mind here with this is that it is essentially an upper trim F-150. So you get all of the good stuff that you like with a standard F-150. You get a massive amount of space in the second row. You get really good tech with these two screens. The lane detection system on this particular truck is better than that on my Ranger because of course my Ranger is based on the last generation platform. This is the new system. Now the one in this truck isn't as fancy as Blue Cruise, which is a true hands-free adaptive cruise. This is a hands-on adaptive cruise, but let's give it a try. Basically, I turn it on, I set my speed, come on, set, speed, okay. I've set it for a speed much faster than the vehicle in front of us, uh, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna keep a gap between me and that vehicle. And then I also have lane tracing uh, enabled, and what that will do is it'll keep me centered in my lane. And these lanes are actually fairly faint on this highway, and it is still managing to see them, which is cool. I can feel the steering wheel kind of doing its thing. Just to take my hands off for a moment so you can see what it's doing, it is keeping us squarely in the middle of the lane. It's actually wandering just a little bit, but that's probably because these lanes are very, very uh, faint. I've driven this truck now in multiple roads, multiple situations, and I found that this particular adaptive cruise is very, very good. The only time it shuts off is uh, in a light rain facing at the sun. Uh, the cameras that it uses get a little obscured and it shuts off, but no problem. It comes right back on uh, the moment that situation is cleared. I've been driving this now for two and a half hours and I'm still really comfortable. I mean, the seats feel great. They have plenty of adjustments. I also get heating and cooling, which is great. It's a really, really bold seating position. I'm just so tall here. It's like you're king of the road. Uh, and the fact that this window is so much lower, it just kind of accentuates how high you're sitting. And then we got that bulge on the hood, which also just says, you know what, get out of my way. And if that's the kind of truck you want, yeah, this is the truck you probably want. <laughs> this has a very specific set of features. If you're looking, for example, like really high towing capacity, this isn't it. It's a Baja truck. Baja trucks are not designed for towing. If you want towing, there's other F-150s or any other car makers that have much higher towing capacities. Uh, primarily, this one actually has a diminished towing capacity because of that rear suspension. It's designed for handling, not for like 12,000 pound loads, and that's okay. Different trucks for different folks. So here's a level flat surface. Let's try a zero to 60. In sport mode, three, two, one, go. Holy moly. And 3.79 seconds. Whoo. Now it is interesting. When I went into sport mode, it shifted from two wheel drive mode to four auto. And I can see why it's because you need the grip. There's so much power out of that supercharged V8. It's just, <laughs> wow. Okay, well that was fun. Now it's time to head off-road. Okay, so here we are at our private test hill. Now, I love running this in the winter when it's covered in snow, and I love running it in the summer when it's dry. Right now, it is March, and that means that the snow is melting and the runoff has made it a sloppy mess. So we're gonna see how many roads we can run here um, before you know it gets just too sloppy because this is a hill. And what happens on mud when you start slipping? Yeah, whew, you go all the way. But let's not worry about that right now. Uh, at this moment, we're going to do the Rattler, which is our logging style road, but it's a really, really bad logging road, <laughs> kind of like the worst you would find in the Pacific Northwest. So it's a good real world example. Now, uh, there are lots of drive modes on here. We did sport a little bit earlier. Now we're gonna switch over to, uh, let's see, let's just do off-road. Actually, this has a lot of rocks and I wanna go very slow. So I'm gonna switch this all the way over to the right. Uh, for the rock crawl mode. And what this requires is me to switch into neutral. It'll also loosen up those shocks because these are adjustable. In sport, they're very firm. In off-road modes, they're really soft. And it immediately locked my rear diff. 
which is interesting. Uh, and then further, it'll use really aggressive individual wheel braking to kind of emulate a locker in the front. Although it is interesting that even at the high price of this truck, it still does not have a front locker. Oh, one thing I really like, this front view is fantastic. Not only do I have guidelines, I also just have a really nice clear picture. So the mud here, I don't want to mess around with, so I'm just going to maintain momentum and throttle through it. Oh, and it's a good reminder just how big this truck is. It's like the width of the road. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Okay, and then up we go over here, and then we'll line up for the Rattler. Come on, you got this. You got this. Yes. Oof, that's a bit of a drop. So because this is my first um, test with this vehicle off-road, and it is very rocky, I'm going to keep it in uh, the rock crawl mode, and we're just going to ease on. Now, this is in four low, so I have the slowest crawl ratio possible. And it's, that's pretty good. Now this isn't really designed as a rock crawler, um, although, you know, for this much money, you want something that's gonna have pretty flexible capability, and I think that's what we're seeing here. It's a big rock on the side there. Let's see, how does that align with what I'm doing? I should be just kissing it. Yeah, and I am. Okay, and then moving on. Now, of course, we have a bit of a drop on our left. <laughs> this is a, um, I believe it's a 30 degree slant, which is pretty dramatic. Uh, and then we have a cut on the inside. I'm actually more worried about the cut on the inside because I want to stay close to it, but I don't want to rub. Man, just such a reminder of how big this thing is. Um, looking at the tracks on the outside, they're about a foot wider than my Ranger. <laughs> That's nuts. Okay, so here we have a very muddy climb. It's going to be super slippery. Let's go check to see what the course is exactly like here. Whew. Yeah, this is kind of steep. So what we have here is a combination of mud, whoop, of mud on top of ice. Uh, because this has been freezing at night and now the sun has come up and it's come above freezing so the surface layer is very slippery and it's sitting on ice so normally the strategy here would be to try out several features but i think for safety's sake and just to get up this we're gonna have to go all in on the first attempt so i think my strategy here is to do off-road mode because i want four high i want maximum wheel spin I'm going to full throttle, use some momentum uh, to get me up the hill. And also the wheels spinning should help fling the mud off. Uh, these are all terrains and we need to have as much of those gaps available in the tread. Okay, let's get to work. I don't fall on my butt going down. Oh boy. Right, so in addition to trying to find grip, uh, we also need to find road because this thing is so wide. I'm going to have to hug tight inside, uh, but because of the slope of the road, we might slip a little bit to the left, but I think that's okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and switch this drive mode to off-road. Go to neutral so we can switch back into uh, four high. It's keeping that rear diff locked. That's part of the setting. Of course, I could manually override it if I want, but nope, that's exactly what I want. I'm gonna put my window up so I don't get mud slinging into the cabin. And here we go. Let's see what this can do. Staying on the inside as much as possible. Fling it around, cut that inside, and boom! The beast! <laughs> okay, we slid sideways a little bit at the end there, but totally did it. And that was actually pretty easy. Um, because you have the weight, you have the programming, you have that rear locker, uh, it just all comes together combined with that supercharged engine power. Nice. So for this next test, I'm going to do something I don't usually do, and uh, it, I am just going to use the hill descent control. But what's unusual about this one is the fact that I actually want to use it this time. I'm not just showing you. Uh, one of our hills is very slippery. Uh, it's that same mud and snow and ice all mixed together uh, and it's even steeper than that hill so well, i was debating 
whether to even do this next test. That's how uh, sketchy it may be. It's really hard to say with certainty how tires will respond to conditions. Um, these are KO2s and they aren't all terrain. <laughs> okay, so if I start sliding, I have a couple options here. I can either uh, slam it in reverse and uh, try to accelerate as much as possible, or I can <sighs> throttle into it and just try to control the vehicle. The one thing I don't like is I have a ledge on the outside left, which uh, could be problematic. So uh, let's give this a try. Uh, let's see. Actually, I want to put up on my gauge cluster here. I want to see. I want to see fuel economy. I want to see my info. So let's go down to Raptor info. Let's see off road. Change the gauge cluster up to all my off road data. So I have steering angle, all that stuff. Let's slam the brakes on and just feel. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of slip. Okay. Yeesh. It's that sun baking the upper surface that is problematic. So uh, let's do crawl control. So they have something called trail control. Um, I can set the button here. Trail control active, use cancel button to resume. So at this point, I am setting the descent speed at one mile per hour. Can I go slower? No, one mile per hour is it. Don't kind of like that pulsing. I kind of would like it to be a little smoother. We're just going to try to maintain straight. So the whole point of a system like this is to maintain traction in slippery descent situations. Exactly what we have here. And we have ice on the inside. We have super slippery mud on the left. Because it's uneven traction, it's possible that, yeah, there we go, my butt sliding out. That's what I was about to say. It's possible I'll have uneven sliding situation, which is exactly what I'm getting. I'm crabbing now. Crabbing is not good. Why is this vehicle crabbing? It shouldn't. It should be, uh, should be going straight like I'm asking, but still I'm going slow. I'm at one mile per hour. We're just creeping down and it's handling it. Okay, we're past the steepest spot, which we're at 13 uh, degrees of angle. And I think we're gonna get down here. Okay, of course, whatever goes down must go up again. And so now we're gonna have to climb out of this hole. Oh, why are you so big? Okay, now we're still on slime. Uh, this portion, I'm actually going to throttle in because I need to get up this. So I'm gonna turn this off. Of course, I can just override it and throttle it, but I just wanna verify my settings. I'm in off-road mode, rear locker still. Okay, I'm still good. So I'm gonna try to hit this mud because that's like a mud bog down there and climb up and out. And here we go. Releasing the brake, throttle in, try to control this. That butt's probably gonna swing around a little bit. Yep, there we go. Maybe we'll bump the inside, maybe not. Oop, window up, window up. Climbing, climbing. 700 horsepower, baby. Okay, and we made it to the level surface which happens to be trees. <laughs> oh my gosh, well, got mud on me, badge of honor, right? Let's take a look at how deep those tracks were. Oh, ho, ho, I have built new tracks. Wow. Now how am I gonna get out of here? I guess up, up is the way to go. I could go over. And yeah, maybe we'll go over, find new roads. Go up and over the logs. Man, I am just digging. My tires are all caked up. And then get a little momentum over the logs. Bump it over. Okay. Watch that butt. I don't want to hit the dirt. I don't want to hit the edge. And I'm hitting the edge. The biggest problem with hitting the inside berm is that it doesn't give me any um, movement on the outside to control things. Oh, man. Okay, I think what we need to do is, I am just digging holes, so I'm gonna go to uh, rock crawl mode, so I'm not digging quite so much. Get a little bit more finesse here and see how this does. Oh, 
I didn't uh, shift into four low yet. Let's get up on that tree. Boom. Okay, go into neutral. Now we're in four low. Now let's see if we can just kind of get out of here. This is where a front locker would actually be really useful. Oh, come on. I am chewing up things. I think I'm rubbing on the inside a little because it's so swampy. Okay, so the issues that we have here are multiple. First off, the tires have completely caked up with mud, so they have like no traction. Second, I just dug two holes that are more than a foot deep. In fact, I would guess they're 13 inches of ground clearance worth of deep. That's a problem. So what I have to do is I have to fill in these holes. I have to add extra traction and I have to add some traction to that rear wheel to get it up and over the log. Frankly, I'm surprised I'm having this much of an issue, although it is very greasy mud. And these are not mud terrain tires, they are all terrain tires, KO2s. If I had mud terrains on this, they'd be called KM, I think threes are the current one. And mud terrains would definitely help today. But working with what I got, I've gotten myself into the situation. It's time to get myself out of it. And I need to figure out how to fill this in. I don't have a shovel with me, so I need to work with what I got. Uh, luckily, I have a fence post right over here. Wasn't planning on getting tetanus today, but I guess you never know what's gonna happen when you're off-roading. So what I wanna do is fill this back in best I can. It's still gonna be ooey and gooey, but at least should be a little bit better. Wasn't how I planned to spend my day, but at least the weather's nice. Uh, the reason why it's not clearing the lugs is first off, they're not mud terrains, but also this stuff just sticks. It's like glue. Like I, <laughs> walking around, I'm gonna have 10 pounds of mud on my feet in a few minutes. Okay, time to find some rocks. Lots and lots of rocks. Ooh, bark is good. Throw some bark in there. So I really haven't improved the trail that much, but I feel like if I back this up a little bit, I might, do I want to return to rock crawl? Yes, thank you. I might actually end up in a slightly better position. So I'm going to try backing up, try to get reset basically, even though I don't have a spot that's really great for that. I'm going to do best I can with what I got. Try not to swing my front end around into the mud. Put my window down so I can see what's going on outside. Yeah, we got lots of shoulder here, so I'm gonna use that shoulder more than I have been. Let's go all the way over onto the shoulder here. We're gonna slime our way there. Now this is actually where I don't wanna, obviously when I was really spinning the wheels, I was causing a lot of uh, holes to be created. So right now I'm just trying to crawl a little bit more to my left. There we go, it's a little bit better. Uh, still sliding into those holes. Wow, so it's not really the issue with the log, it's the issue with the dynamics here. I don't want to throw a rock, so I'm easing over it. Can I get out of here? Okay, don't want to dig holes. Let's not dig holes. Let's try to go more left. I don't want to go into those holes again. Boy, this stuff is super slimy. Loading up those tires. Bump it, oh, so close. I really felt like that was really close. Come on. There we go. And now I'm actually gonna go a little bit off the ledge here. Okay, let's just hold it and take a look at the situation before I commit to this. Wow, so that was deep. <laughs> ay ay ay. Wow. Okay, well, we're not gonna do that again anytime soon. Not until this dries out, which might be about two months. Right. Okay, so. Looking at the situation, I've decided I'm not 
gonna turn around and go back that way. I'm just gonna go up and out the straight way because I believe where the grass is will have more traction uh, than basically staying out of this mud. So we're gonna make that happen. And I'm actually gonna use trail control. Set for one mile per hour. Now I need to swing out here. Every single time. Okay, uh, 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 uh. not too much. I need to swing wide here. This is where I'm a little concerned. I don't wanna dig up the grass because my only way is down and there's a lot of rocks and trees there. Okay, we're on the grass. Let's see if we just get momentum here. No. Can I go back just a little bit? I think turning around. Turning around might be my only option here. Clear the rock at least. same problem I had before. This is exactly where I was before with another raptor. Let's see how we're doing with the rock back there. Oh, we got a branch right there. We've cleared the rock, so that's good. If I can swing that around. Let's try swinging. So I'm just gonna block this back driver's side to let the passenger side swing slightly. Okay, that was progress. We got higher, that's good. We can do this, we got this. Of course, always a boulder behind me. Why is there always a boulder behind me? If there wasn't a boulder, I could just boop, boop, but nope, big boulder, bigger than I am. Going with the old saying, if I have a lever big enough, I can move the world. See if we can move this boulder. I don't know how deep this boulder is, if it's just sitting on the surface or if it's five feet deep. Oh, that's not too bad. Uh, seriously. Uh, I got one more pull. Let's use them all. Come on. How are you not falling yet? Huh, well, there's that. There we go. Try it again. Okay. Well, this is not exactly what I was planning. I guess I can swing that around still. Ah, mud everywhere. Okay, that's good. Believe it or not, that's good. Sliming to the right. So I'm drifting to the right, even just on the mud. I'm not even doing anything. This is where I really hope that 13 inches of ground clearance comes into help because I'm using it all. Okay, and our wheel tracks show that we're gonna clear. If I can just get, oh man, this is what I was afraid of, straddling with a big boulder behind me again. Darn it, mud on the inside. Sorry, Ford. Okay, apparently I need to check the outside again. Oh man, I got mud in here. I hate it when I do that. Yeah, this was afraid of. Let's see what we got stuck in there now. So ultimately the problem here isn't really that the Raptor R isn't capable of stuff like this. It's the fact that this mud was way deeper than I expected and we are on all-terrain tires, not mud terrain tires. Those would certainly help. So at this point, the truck's not technically stuck, but 
it's not improving. And the more I snake this way, eventually I'm gonna high center it. So to avoid doing that, I've called my neighbor. They're gonna come down. I mean, I could be stacking rocks here all day, but I think it's time for me to sit eat my lunch and wait for a rescue. Sometimes when you're off-roading, stuff happens. So luckily I have neighbors who own a construction company and they also have a Jeep with a wench. So uh, they are out here and they're gonna string a couple hundred feet of wench line uh, to help pull me out. The issue of course is that they don't wanna get stuck in the exact same situation. So they're not gonna drive out here, but they have pretty good anchoring on the upper part of the course. I'm just gonna try to keep momentum up the corner here. And this is where I live now. I bet this thing would do awesome with mud terrains, but also a front locker. That said, at the end of the day, if all you have uh, are all-terrain tires and they're completely slicked up with mud, a type of mud that just doesn't unstick, well, you know, that's it. There's really nothing you can do. It doesn't matter how much horsepower you have. And I think that's actually what a good lesson here with this. Even with 700 horsepower, V8 supercharged, still, if you don't have the right tires for this situation, this is what you get. So would a set of KM3s from BFG get us through this situation? I honestly don't know. But uh, one thing we know for sure, in slick mud like this, KO2s aren't good enough. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, Share our videos, we make them for you, and I hope you enjoy them. And uh, with that, I am uh, gonna get towed out of here, <laughs> up the last hill. Hmm. And uh, apparently I need to clean this thing now, because it is filthy.